Man has hunted since the beginning of time. What began with crude weapons and animal images scrawled on cave walls has developed into a multi-million dollar industry. From the Tilton Hiltons to the mansions in the marsh, we hunt and we cook. Everything from rabbits and raccoons to deer and ducks while learning about the passion of sportsmen through the ages. Man's love affair with hunting is really not about the kill, but how to prepare a sumptuous wild game banquet after the hunt. Now get that camouflage apron and join me, Chef John Foles, for another Taste of Louisiana. Funding for After the Hunt with Chef John Foles is brought to you by the Baton Rouge Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. Day is dawning on the Mississippi River and the sun is shining on Baton Rouge. Attractions, shopping, food, and southern hospitality you know and love. Go BR and go brighter. And the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting. Our mission is to tell Louisiana's story to the world. And by the Louisiana Department of Culture, Recreation, and Tourism. Vacation planning guides are available at louisianatravel.com. You wait all year for your vacation. Don't sleep through it. Don't y'all just love him over there, huh? The New Orleans. <laughs> hey, everybody, thank you so very much for joining me in Sportsman's Paradise for another edition of A Taste of Louisiana. I am absolutely delighted to have most of you in the studio today. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, I, I won't point you out, you know. <laughs> y'all, as I've traveled over the state uh, over the last couple of years, one thing has become crystal clear to me that hunting is very big business. While many clubs are jointly owned by recreational hunters, just as many private reserves have made hunting a luxurious, personalized experience, attracting hunters from across the globe. On more than one occasion, I've been the guest at one of Louisiana's premier hunting camps, and I have to say one of my absolute favorites, Giles Island. Let's take a look. Giles Island is a place of legend. In 1541, Hernando de Soto discovered the Mississippi River just north of here. Once a working plantation adjoining the North Bluff of Natchez, it was also the site of duels in the early 19th century. Jim Bowie participated in a squabble here known as the Sandbar Fight. Bowie was shot twice, stabbed in the shoulder, and also had a cane sword run through his, his chest and he survived and he killed two men. Which earned him the reputation of being an unparalleled knife fighter and creating demands across the South for the now famous Bowie Knife. Giles Island is a large secluded island in the middle of the Mississippi River between Faraday, Louisiana and Natchez, Mississippi, accessible only by boat. Why do people come to Giles Island? I'll tell you why. That's to get a, a buck of a lifetime. Uh, to bring their children to get their first buck. To see trophy bucks that are very unusual. You won't find them on many places because we manage them so well here. Speed Bancroft fell in love and purchased this woodland paradise in 1992, immediately initiating an intense wildlife management program and developing facilities for recreational hunting. Giles Island is truly a deer hunter's paradise with 9,400 acres of land ranging from dense thickets to wide open fields and is recognized as the premier fair chase trophy white tail buck destination in the south. I mean, you, you can't kill a big buck unless you go where big bucks are and we have the big bucks. And that's what we do. All of our hunts are one-on-one -on -one guided and uh, we tell the hunter what, which buck is legal to shoot. And what we're doing is what most hunting clubs only dream about doing. We are shooting old deer. I mean, if he's eight points or less, he's got to be a four-year-old before you can shoot him. Nine points or more have to be a five-year-old. 
Giles Island gives the term deer stand a whole new meaning. There's more than a hundred stands that are either ladder or lock on and range from 14 to 25 feet in height. Nothing wrong with these stands, but gun hunters as well as non-hunting guests might also opt for one of the 30 all-weather box stands. Now, that's what I'm talking about. And hunting at Giles comes with a sort of trophy guarantee. Hunters that don't kill a trophy buck can rebook for half price on any open date within the same season. But hunting is certainly not limited to deer. Giles Island, unlike most hunting destinations, offers the opportunity to hunt squirrels, rabbits, and other small game, as well as ducks, dove, and turkey. There's nothing like going out there and hearing old thunder chicken sound off early in the morning. It's pretty fun. A turkey hunter just gets wrapped up with it. I mean, just, he gets consumed during, I mean, almost, you almost lose your family, you know, your kids hate you during turkey season. Turkey season starts in the middle of March and lasts until May the 1st. Only three turkey hunters are allowed on the acreage per day, giving each hunter 3,100 acres of his own land to hunt. With that much territory, bagging a trophy eastern wild turkey is near guaranteed. Hunting fees include meals and first-rate accommodations at the Sipping Shack, Fort Bragg, and the Treetop. Days start with a pre-hunt continental breakfast. Following the morning hunt, a true southern breakfast is served. There's lunch, and after the evening hunt, supper is prepared by the Giles Island chef. Today, Giles Island is not only known for its duels and legends of discovery, it's the home of legendary hunting as well. That's what I do is that I can't follow through. I can't break away. Uh, well, Bobby, I hope you don't mind me wearing the, my camouflage glasses today, but I can't see my food, so I'm going to take them off. <laughs> hey, oh, there y'all are. How y'all doing, huh? <laughs> oh, it's so nice. Hey, it's so nice to have y'all. When did y'all get here? Huh? <laughs> uh, yeah, what a what a great uh, uh, what a great piece that was we were just looking at, and uh, y'all have to introduce Speed Bancroft uh, right here at the county. Nancy Bancroft, thank y'all so much for producing that wonderful Giles Island. So nice to have y'all here. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thunder Chicken, right? Thunder Chicken, huh? <laughs> Jimmy Riley, he's he's in charge of uh, well, he manages Giles Island, but also. Uh, when, when I get invited to hunt there, which isn't often because I can never hit anything, but they, they'll let me come when nobody else is there. I, I, I'll, I'll go into one of those uh, blinds or one of those, uh, one of those uh, uh, places with Jimmy. Thanks so much, Jimmy, for always being so hospitable when I get there. Very nice. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then Speed Bancroft, Speed Bancroft Jr. right there. What a wonderful family of our folks there. <laughs> Y'all, we're talking today about venison, needless to say, and, uh, and one of the things that I, that I always ask hunters to do is this. When you go out and hunt, don't only think of the primal cuts, that, the, the roast and the filet mignons and all of those wonderful things. Think about this. We've just taken an animal off of the land. We want to use every piece of it. And if you, uh, you hunters who tell me, uh, anybody in here who likes to hunt and not cook the venison or the ducks or the geese or anything, uh, no, right? Huh? You're, you're the kind of hunters I like. You eat every single thing, the feathers, the feet, right? All of that, huh? Uh, the skin. Hey, good guy, y'all tan the hides. What good people you are, huh? Y'all wonderful. Uh, no, but I encourage all of you, go out and take the animal, but please respect the fact that the good Lord gave it to us for food. Use it all up or give it to your neighbors or call me. My 800 number, I'll give it to you later. Uh, so that's why I'm doing a... Uh, that's why I'm doing hearts today. Now, this is everybody's favorite organ meat, right? Huh? What? Yeah. Y'all get me sick. Huh? <laughs> no, I love y'all. Uh, look, this is a deer heart right here. Now, I know if I just lifted this up and had a little contest and said, what kind of heart this is, you'd probably all just shrug your shoulders. This is a deer heart, so I'll pass that up. All right, now... What I've done is to take my little paring knife and made a pocket right in the top of it. What a wonderful lean piece of meat when braised properly. You talk about something really fantastic. So I want to uh, start you off on using all of the game meat by showing you what to do here. What I'm, what I'm going to do with the heart after it's nice and clean and cut open like this, I'm going to make a stuffing. And the stuffing, uh, I'm using a little uh, Italian sausage. Use whatever. Some of you make your own sausage, right? 
You make venison sausage? Huh? Does anybody make sausage in here? Huh? 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 Here, look, play with that one a little while right there, huh? <laughs> Give me my sausage bag. What's wrong with you? Huh? Give me my sausage bag. Oh, oh. Huh? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I got my sausage right here, all right? <laughs> all right, I'm going to season it up because I'm making my stuffing for the heart. Y'all playing with your food. Didn't your mother tell you about that already, huh? <laughs> Garlic, onion, celery, bell pepper. I'm going to come into that with a little salt, a little pepper. Y'all you, you, with me here? And I'm going to, a little adobo. You know what this is? Poblano peppers with a nice spicy uh, taste to it. That's going to be great. Garlic, oh, I need more garlic. Right there. Now, while I'm making the stuffing here, I have to ask uh, Speed Bancroft here. Uh, you bought an island and turned it into one of the greatest hunting reserves in the world. I'm going to say the world. Why did you do that? I like to hunt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How many acres? 9,400 acres. 9,400 acres, huh? And I only got invited once last year. 94, <laughs> what, 9,400? I mean, you got to put me in a corner over there somewhere, right? Huh? Huh? We'll talk after, okay? Huh? In fact, since I was only invited over there once, you get to eat a heart. Okay. <laughs> uh, now, 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 tell me about the island. What makes the island so special? Well, it's got history as well as wildlife, uh, beauty, aesthetics, and a lot of good trees. Right. My hobbies and trees. Now, now, you do a magnificent job of tree planting. How many plant? How many? Now, y'all harvest some hardwood off of the island, but then at the same time, you're putting back trees at all times, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And and but uh, what what about uh, fruit trees too? Not only hardwood. A lot of fruit trees. Yeah. I like to put some of those olive trees that you have. Yeah, olive and, and also kumquat. You need kumquat, to put some yeah. kumquat down. Yeah. He and I ride around Jaws Island and we talk about what kind of trees to plant while big bucks are running in front of it. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 like this gigantic buck will run in front of it. I say, why don't you put an olive tree right there? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, y'all, hey, I've stuffed the heart. I'm going to put a little skewer in here like this. You can take a string if you want to and just kind of tied so that it doesn't all come out. But I have some already done. Y'all with me? You know where I'm at? Use your own sausage stuffing, whatever. I've got some already brown here. Now, let me tell you what I'm going to do. Now that they're all brown, if you have any stuffing left, by the way, make some of these little boulettes, right? So now I'm going to come into my skillet. with. Look how beautiful these are right here, all nice and golden brown, already stuffed. Now into that, my uh, onion, celery, bell pepper, all of and garlic, y'all. I use big garlic for this one. I'm going to throw in the whole cloves of garlic, y'all see that? And a lot of onions. A lot of these wonderful red onions in here. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Huh? Can y'all see that or what? Huh? Isn't that nice? Oh, absolutely. Now, and then, then I'm going to take the little boulettes, the little balls of the seasoning, and I'm going to drop those in as well. And what I'm going to do now is to take the, uh, the skillet over to my venison stock pot and I'm gonna fill it up with a wonderful flavor of the venison stock see that now this is gonna go into about a 350 degree oven with the lid on and it's gonna cook for about two and a half hours because these uh, the venison heart stuffed will be so tender I always put a lid on the top I'm going to that oven. you can cook them on top of the stove if you want to but going to the oven you don't have to touch them after that just put them down in there and when they come out, they are so nice and tender. Take a look at this right here. I've sliced them with the stuffing in. Just right here. You see that? Huh? Look, get a good shot of that right there. See the stuffing right in the middle? Huh? I tell you what, makes me think of calling family to come over to eat tonight, huh? They always want to come over when I'm doing the filet. They get in the heart tonight, huh? <laughs> uh, well, y'all, I tell you, we had just absolutely a great, great uh, experience at Giles Island and while I was there we got together in the kitchen and we cooked venison tenderloin with a kumquat glaze that's why I want you to do the tree y'all watch Speed and I cook venison tenderloin y'all I'm here at beautiful Giles Island right outside of Natchez with uh, my good friend Speed Bancroft 
owner of Giles Island, and today we're, we're having a little party. And I'm, I'm, I've decided to serve venison tenderloin. I mean, the tenderloin is the most flavorful of all of the, uh, the cuts of venison, I think. Very, uh, you're a big deer hunter, so you know that this is prime, right? Right. This is the best, it, this is the best it gets. It's the best. No, I can do a good roast, but it, but for, for good friends, you want to go with the tenderloin. Right. right. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to cut them into little medallions like this, and I'm going to season them with salt, pepper. Does this crowd like um, spicy food? Or? Oh, they do. <laughs> okay, we're going to pile it on for them. Yeah. Now, uh, now, Giles Island, we've been uh, taking some beautiful tours here. How many acres on the, on, on the island? 9,400. 9,400. And, and people come here not only to have good food and fun, but I mean, this, this is trophy buck country, right? It's the best bucks in the world. The best bucks. Now, you've, how long have you had Giles Island? Since 1992, about 18 years. A labor of love, I bet, huh? It has been. Yeah, no. So I'm taking the uh, the turnidos, uh, the turnidos of venison, I'm going to call it, with kumquat glaze. Now, these are cooked very, very quickly, so I'm not in a... Uh, I, I don't want to don't want them to sit in here too long because you can see there's not much marbling, mm -hmm. not much uh, marbling in the in the meat at all. So I, I want to just kind of cook it quickly. Medium rare is perfect mm -hmm. for this. So with that, I'm gonna. What kind of wine goes with this? Red wine. <laughs> Any kind. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna go in. The, the venison is almost done. I'm gonna throw some little shallots. Of course, you know the good thing about cooking venison. Anything goes with it. It loves fruit mm -hmm. because you planted a lot of fruit trees, apples, pears, plums, and the deer will eat that, so naturally it's going to be good to cook with yeah. as well. I'm going to put some herbs, basil, thyme, tarragon. I'm going to put a little bit more granulated garlic, and I'm going to turn this over one more time. Can I borrow a, a little bit of that red wine of you yours? You certainly can. Can I borrow a little bit of it? Let me get a little bit. <laughs> there you go. A little bit of all right, All right. Now I'm going to put some gloss. This is a good, good stock, a good a venison stock that I made. And then I'm going to put kumquat. Talk about fruit. This is a beautiful kumquat. Kumquat jam right here is going to go in. I tried of, to plant some of those on the island. Kumquat? I, oh, did, these, I didn't make it. Oh, these ought to grow well here, huh? Really? Kumquat. These are candied kumquats. Yeah. Now I'm going to stir that around a little bit. The sweetness is going to be great with the venison. And then to finish it, very, very simple. I'm going to do three of the turn of those right in the center of the plate like this. This is already done. And I'm going to center it right like that. Put a little bit of this beautiful gloss right on top with, those, with that wonderful uh, kumquat. And I can even garnish it with a little bit of these uh, green onions and speed. Mm. That's the way it is right here with Boy. venison tenderloin taken right off of Giles Island. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah, get, a, get a sniff of that. It's your wine. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it is We're going to feed these guys. Yeah. All right. Hey, Bobby. <laughs> uh -huh. Isn't he great, y'all? Unbelievable, huh? Bobby Lanaro. Huh? I tell you what, if 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 I had any money, I would pay you to do this show. <laughs> I, uh, I really would. I mean, you're that good. You That's deserve, we you deserve to be paid. But I I just, uh, I just want you to know that. <laughs> Y'all, what a great those a tenderloin of, of venison with the kumquat glaze with your red wine. Oh, that was good, huh? It was good. That was really good, huh? Well, a anyway, it was uh, what a great night we spent there in that Venice. People just, uh, I, I don't know if people really realize those who say they hunt but don't like to eat the meat. I just don't think you're, you're looking into those books and, and searching out those great recipes are. Thank you for watching the show because we're going to share them with you. Anyway, now what I want to do is uh, another underutilized cut. I'm just taking some stew meat that would normally be ground probably into sausage. Y'all know what I mean? Everything goes into sausage, right? Huh? <laughs> Oh, there's a deer. Grind him up, huh? Grind him up. Let's go. Put some Italian seasoning in him and Cajun green onion. That's a green onion deer. That's an Italian deer. Stop it. Stop it. Let's go and take some of those cuts and reserve them for things like this. And, of course, nothing better than a nice lean venison going into a soup. Why? The marsh is going to give you a wonderful flavor. And at the same time, it's a meat that's coming from the harvest, from the hunt, that's going to be just a great way to use it. So stew it, braise it, 
and make soup out of it. So take a look at the uh, meat, the stew meat, how beautiful this is. So I would uh, never put this into jerky or put this into, uh, uh, into sausage when I could make a good soup or braised stew out of it. But let's look at the ingredients going into the soup. Onions, celery, bell pepper, look, uh, uh, soup. So I have a little bit of the uh, uh, green beans. Okay, y'all, so I have, y'all come over to my pot over here. So now you see all of my ingredients, a lot of garlic. Look how I've browned the meat. I want y'all to take a look uh, into this pot. You see the caramelization on the bottom, all of this nice stuff down here. And uh, Jimmy, while this is cooking, as the, the manager of Giles Island and uh, uh, in charge of all the guys, what makes a great guide? We had talked about uh, how the guide approaches the hunter. Tell me a little bit about that. We want that guide to have some good woodsmanship skills, be able to take that hunter out there and show them the deer sign and show them the tree they need to get in and all that kind right. of thing. And then we can train them kind of on what we were trying to shoot those old deer. You know, that's the tough part right there. Yeah, because that's how, and, and you, you said uh, something really interesting about how what Giles Island has is because of its management program, the big, big bucks. I mean, that's what makes it really interesting there. And it wasn't always like that. Um, Thanks to Mr. Bancroft opening the door and, and, and uh, we, we close this thing down and it's a very limited number of hunters we take and we've got total control so so well, we I'll let these deer go to the right age to be all they can be. Well we want to talk about that a little bit more. I'm gonna, y'all as you can see the meat is browning nicely here. I'm gonna put a lot of garlic into it, that's important. I'm gonna season it just a little bit more in the pot because as it simmers in this bacon fat, y'all, this is bacon fat, huh? I like bacon fat or what, huh? That's the main thing. Now let's go in with the vegetables here, and I'm not going to tell you what they are. You already saw the carrots and potatoes and the melon, all that, the, the onions are going into it. Oh, look at these little pearl. I'm going to tell you about the pearl onions. Look how beautiful those little purple ones are right there. You probably walked through so many grocery stores and looked at those little bags of, of uh, purple onions and said, what do you do with that? Now you know, you make venison soup with it, right? Now that's it. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and cook this around a little bit. Of course, this is gonna just simmer. Now you would think that this would be enough in here, but no, it's not, it's not enough. We're gonna come in with a little bit black-eyed peas. We're gonna come in with uh, other beans. Oh yeah, red beans, huh? Come, y'all all right, huh? Y'all right? Y'all awake out there with all this stuff going into the pot? Uh, maybe you make better soup than I do. I don't know, huh? Huh? Maybe. Uh, <laughs> now, uh, now uh, you, you mentioned turkey hunting as well because, boy, I tell you, only three people hunting turkey at a time on Giles Island. Is that yeah, what you said? Yeah, yeah, us turkey hunters, we're greedy, man. We need a lot more <laughs> acres. <laughs> you know. what, what's the best thing, just the s single best thing other than landscape, the accommodations at Giles Island is incredible. The best thing about hunting that? The sheer number of deer with a lot of big bucks mixed in the in the crowd. Yeah. I mean, it's just unbelievable. We'll go out there, like right now, if you leave the camp, you'll go a quarter of a mile at, at 7.30 in the afternoon and you're gonna see 125 deer. And all I saw was kumquat trees. <laughs> 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 hey, look, let me tell you, uh, these guys, not the hospitality, the, lo the love that these guys share with you, and, and, and and Little Speed Bancroft, huh? Yeah, let, let me tell you, you're fun to have over there as well. You're a great storyteller. You must have learned it from the old man. I did. Right? Uh, we'll talk to him next time, huh? Uh, uh, he was telling me one day about, uh, yeah, I used to stay in that shack when I was a young boy. They called that the Sipping Shack. I said, oh, really, huh? <laughs> Where was I? <laughs> all right, y'all, so we have this all, uh, all going nicely here, and I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit to this. Nancy, you keep all those guys in shape, and, and uh, you, you keep them all checked over there? Oh, I do my best. You keep your best. <laughs> okay, y'all, so I'm going to put the stock in here. I think you have the idea. I'm going to put the tomato in right there. I'm going to put the tomato paste in. You have the idea. We're going to let this right here cook for about, well, you know, venison's going to take a little bit longer to cook than, uh, than normal, so, uh, than, than beef, let's say. So you're going to want to cook this until the meat is just falling apart. And this is going to be just a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful soup. Now, I want to show you what it looks like when it's done right here. I'm going to come right on to the counter and open that up. Do you get a look at this right here? Uh, uh, Y'all with me or what, huh? You with me, huh? You got me? Oh, uh, so... So anyway, y'all, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's the cooking today. All the underutilized cuts of meat in venison. Y'all go out and make sure 
that those are going into your pot, not only tenderloin. Thank you all so much for being here with us today. And y'all, I want to thank all of you for joining us in the swamp lands of Louisiana. And remember, man's love affair with hunting is not about the kill or the skill. It's all about the fabulous feast after the hunt. See you next time on A Taste of Louisiana. Y'all come on up. There you go. That's yours right there. There you go. To purchase the After the Hunt cookbook by Chef John Foles, an After the Hunt t-shirt or program DVD, call the number on your screen. Funding for After the Hunt with Chef John Foles is brought to you by the Baton Rouge Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. Day is dawning on the Mississippi River and the sun is shining on Baton Rouge. Attractions, shopping, food, and southern hospitality you know and love. Go BR and go brighter. And the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting. Our mission is to tell Louisiana's story to the world. and by the Louisiana Department of Culture, Recreation, and Tourism. Vacation planning guides are available at louisianatravel.com. You wait all year for your vacation. Don't sleep through it. <laughs>